Here I am again. Well, what are we going to be doing? Well, I decided to make a cheaper one rather than those expensive guitars that I've been kicking together. And I, I, I looked around the internet and, uh, you know, local guitar things, you know, the sort of thing where you go bitting around for almost scrap. <laughs> and here it is. Let me run you through some of the things that are going to be up and coming on this video. Uh, it's really all good. Really cheap and nasty body. I think it's about a hundred dollars or maybe 110. That's about 70 pounds or something. I don't know. So I started off with that. And this one says two pounds 14 ounces. And it's uh, it claims to be ash. Doesn't really matter because when I show you in a bit what we're going to do with it, uh, you're going to go, wow. Or you're going to go, oh. Well, it doesn't really matter because I'm doing it and you aren't. Oh. And we moved on to the neck. Now, I have a, a liking for Fender necks because they're good. But I decided this time to go on with the really cheap body. I'd go on with one of these cheap Chinese necks. And trust me, this was about $70. It even had a logo on when I got it. <laughs> So don't accuse me of uh, doing this, doing that, and doing the other. It came from a local, uh, sort of one of those, uh, you know, shows you go around where they sell things cheap and stuff like that. But actually, if you look at it, look at her finishing and that. I mean, look at that. You can see all that maple in the, the you know, ah, oh, it's nice. And it's bound. You see that? I thought it was quite good for its... Uh, for it's seventy dollars or so, whatever it was, it was peanuts, honestly, peanuts, and it looks uh, it just looks the part. So, so I bought it. <laughs> you seen that program? You bought it. <laughs> what well, I did. So, what else is going to be in this fantastic guitar? Well, I just went to plain old tu tuners, sorry, tuners to the English guys, tuners to the American boys, and these are the genuine ones, and I. I I think this is awesome because these are genuine Fender made in Taiwan. <laughs> Ridiculous. So if you really think that the Fender ones are better than the Taiwan ones, oh, you go figure it. Or even the Chinese ones maybe these days. Who knows? I don't know. But these are Taiwan ones made by Fender. Genuine part. So you could say it's a Fender part. It's closed. How much were there? $60, give or take. But I wanted it to be just that bit different than everybody else he's got. And I thought and thought about it, and I saw this stuff on eBay. Uh, it's called veneer. If you know what veneer is, that's no problem. But if you don't, it's like a, a thin slither of wood that you can sort of stick on. Now, it's not plastic, it's the real deal. Um, what I, I found was uh, some sheets of burl walnut. Now you know when you, you see them trees, they've got them big things growing out, they're like, well, <laughs> I won't tell you what they, they remind me of, but they're like a, a growth at the bottom of the tree, usually in the root or near the root. Uh, what they do is take that off and cut through it, and you get this fantastic figuring, uh, like nothing else. Let me just go get the piece and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. Now when we are talking about figuring on a guitar, we always think of maple or you know, maybe ash or, I don't know, the usual sort of stuff. The usual suspects, that's what I'd say. And those usual suspects cost you an arm and a leg, don't they? Well, I wanted to get this result where this guitar should look great, if, if I can do it, I've never done this before. So I'll be going with you, won't I? Yeah, but it, if, if it comes as it should do, it's going to look really, really quite good. But next to nothing cost. And I've got one of them sheets here and it cost me uh, $30 for six sheets of burl walnut veneer which I think's a cracking deal. Here it is. Just take a look at the figure in yourself and see what you think. You know by the time we apply this it is. Take a real good look at that some fantastic figuring in there. By the time we take that and we apply it to the top of this guitar, oh, and I forgot to tell you, 
I've got so much of this stuff, I'm going to apply it to the back as well. So it's going to be a real custom job that you don't just go and buy just any old place because they don't make them, do they? So this ugly duckling is going to turn into a swan. Ah, that sounds good. A cheap swan. A reasonably cheap swan. Okay, well for the glue, uh, we've got to cut out this uh, piece. Uh, really bigger than what we need. I'll just whiz across there. And there's the one I've just finished and uh, I'm going to iron that on now. Now what you see uh, is it's stuck on the board. It's very rough. What you do is sand all the edges around. I got it wrong here a little bit so I'm just going to basically uh, sand that away. Down this edge and so on. Feather this into the other wood. What you see is the body. Uh, we can see how easy it pushes through. Uh, what you normally do though is trim that with a knife all around what you marked earlier and if you didn't mark it well you can still do that uh, but you just got to be a bit more careful just be very let it all dry it's never going to be perfect I'm no expert and you know that I'm just like the veneer stuck it on the top I'm going to go and sandpaper this around presently so it sort of moulds in I did the back too I'm going to do the same with that just around the edges it's all going to look like it Back to the I just body. wanted to talk a little bit about this body and this veneer. It's a bit of a pain. It's just one of them harebrained ideas I had. Now you can go and get real glue and stick this on with real glue and hold it in place with presses and all sorts. That's what they do. Right, I'm one of them guys. I'm like you. You only got a press. You haven't got an idea, neither have I. <laughs> so don't worry. Look at that. See that? So what it was, was a, a really nice, cheap Chinese body. And I, I decided to stick this walnut on the top and on the back. And uh, finish it off and so on and so forth. But the more I looked at the body and the more I had problems, there's lots of problems on this I'm going to cover later. I decided in the end to say, hey Tony, you're going to have a piece of junk if you're not careful. Why put all the slightly better bits on this one? What all we really need to do is to get some decent bits rather than some less decent bits. So one of the things I'm going to do is compare uh, sort of an American built neck, for example, with a Chinese built neck, for example. And it's got a Fender logo on, don't worry about that, it's, it's just a copy. But this was a neck that I bought uh, originally intending to make uh, or assemble <laughs> I can't wait well, a guitar that most people could easily afford. And this neck cost, believe it or not, with all that figuring, if you can see all that, it's really nice. And uh, the stuff down the side will finish nice, nice on the frets too, on the ends in particular, which I'll get to. Uh, quite a nice looking neck. The only problem is, it's nothing like a fender neck, believe it or not. You just think it is. It is. Looks the same, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we'll come to that a bit later. What I want to do is to really make you think about when you go and buy cheap Chinese parts and cheap Chinese bodies, the sort of problems that you could come across. And we started out wanting to make this low cost guitar cheap Chinese parts and as I said later on I'll show you some of the other benefits of buying the cheap crap and then you won't buy them will you hopefully I'm going to go over showing you a couple of things on those comparisons between that Chinese stuff and these and I'm just going to talk about these other bits as we go along and I'll talk about some of the things on this neck and the, the Chinese neck that might surprise you somewhat there they are, side by side, and uh, I'm not going to spend hours on it, I just want to show you some of these features of the problems that you, trust me, you will have if you go and buy these necks and you try and fit them to a fender strap body. And that body there is exactly the same as a real fender body, it's the same, don't anybody give me the crap that it isn't. Straight off you can see, looking at this neck, 
Well, look. Spot the difference? Well, that one stops there, and this one stops here. How ridiculous is that? But it gets better than that. One of the reasons I gave up with this neck is you can see that I've sort of been grating down at the end here. Can you see that? Grating the edges down. Can you see? To make it rounder. Okay, so these corners actually weren't these corners. Well, it's a problem. Because this is all a finished neck and it's all nice and this particular one's bound and even the binding isn't a fender shape at the end. What about that? So you buy this neck just to plonk on your strat or on a body that you might have made or bought or done whatever and it's the wrong profile. In fact I don't think that fits any strat. <laughs> it's almost like a Telecaster neck. It's ridiculous. It looks a good idea until you see that. But there's more. And this is where we move on to issues with the neck. Uh, I'm going to get the camera and come in close and I'm going to show you this Chinese one. Remember that's the bound one. And I'm going to show you the Warmoth one. Which, in all intents and purposes, the Warmoth one is the correct shape, size, correct headstock, correct this, correct that, and the Chinese one isn't. It's got a bigger headstock, it's got the wrong profile, but there is something about the Chinese one that's actually better than the Warmoth one, and the Warmoth one is six to eight times more expensive. So let me get the camera, and we'll come and have a quick look. It's a real eye-opener. Okay, so what you got there is the, the Chinese neck. You can see it's bound very nice indeed it is bound and you can look I want you to look really carefully at the fret ends because this is how it came to me and you know it feels really nice on those fret ends okay well there's the Warmoth one but these frets you can see are finished very different on the end you can see they've been edged off well they have now by me but they were almost uh, just slightly diagonal to vertical and they dug in your hand like you wouldn't believe so what I ended up doing is going get uh, you know a, a stone and uh, stoning the sides of the uh, frets. Now I just quickly want to cover this section. When you look at those two uh, headstocks, they look quite similar. Well, they do sort of. The only problem is this headstock here actually is bigger. It's got a bigger profile on this edge. It's further out, and uh, around here it's sort of not quite the same. So what you're really getting is a profile that isn't quite a fender neck but it claims it is. This is a bit of a letdown really. Uh, only when you put one uh, neck on top of the other do you see these shortcomings and it's the same down this end. Only when you actually put one neck over the other or try and fit this neck in that body over there, over there it is, uh, then you will notice that it doesn't fit. Uh, and it, once again, like this thing here, like I showed you before, you can see very clearly. That one ends there, this one ends here. It's almost like one of them uh, Japanese necks that they've gone and copied somehow. I don't know. 